Thank you very much. Astronaut's a little bit ambitious. I think I'm just going to do an amateur astronomer tonight, maybe, maybe next time around. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for having me here. Uh, my name is Ricky Ainsworth, and uh, I, I run a planetarium in, in Grand Rapids. Um, I recently turned 30 years old, and um, yeah, and I, I realized as I was getting ready for this talk that that means that I've, I've worked in planetarium education for half my life now, and I've worked, or I've, I've been involved in amateur astronomy for four fifths of my life, which is a whole lot and makes me feel old. Um, but uh, maybe that'll uh, give me some cred here as I go forward, and uh, it probably won't blow your mind to I say that when I say that I'm, I'm really into astronomy, and I think it's pretty rad, and I just want to tell you a little bit about it tonight. So if uh, Nick can get me started, let's go. A lot of people, a lot of people tell me that, um, at the, in my job at the planetarium, a lot of people tell me that they've always wanted to learn about astronomy. Uh, they've always wanted to learn more about the nighttime sky, but they haven't found the time, or maybe they just don't know how to get started. Much less. Patient. But um, I'm happy to tell those people at the planetarium, just like I'm telling you all here tonight, that uh, it's never been easier to get into amateur astronomy. I'll take all night. <laughs> well, it's never been easier to get you into amateur astronomy. And it's a lot of fun. Um, gone are the days when amateur astronomy was inaccessible. Uh, the, the exclusive domain of the pocket protector crowd. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. But today, observing and appreciating the night sky can be casual for just about anyone, and it's easy to do. All the information you need is just a few clicks away. It can be cheap or free if you want it to be. So why should you care about astronomy? Why should you care about any of this stuff? Now, there are the big philosophical reasons. Uh, the universe is huge. As humans, we possess this thirst for discovery, and it's in our nature to observe, to explore, try to understand why these, how these things work. On a more practical level, when you understand the regular predictable motions of the sun, moon, and stars, the sky can be your compass, your clock, your calendar. That's to say nothing of the tangible social value of improving one's science literacy in the modern world. But that's a talk all by itself. Perhaps the most compelling reasons to get into astronomy are the small personal ones. It can be a solo activity, a chance to unplug from television and Twitter for a few minutes and have a, a little bit of quiet contemplation. At the same time, stargazing can be a great social event, something different, meaningful you can do while hanging out with friends or spending time with family. But enough about why, let's get to the how. Assuming that some aspect of astronomy interests you, uh, how can you get started? It's easy. Go outside and look up. The night sky is free, it's beautiful, and it's always there if there aren't clouds in the way. Learn some constellations to get started learning about the sky. You might want to get yourself a star map. Something simple, maybe one you can find and print out online. One of my favorites is the Abrams Sky Calendar, produced right here in Lansing, Michigan, at Michigan State University. And there are others, but they're not as good. Uh, but when you do go out tonight, or on any night, start by looking for one of the most famous star pictures, the Big Dipper. Seven stars, memorize the pattern, go out and look for that first. It's your guide to finding other things in the sky. That's sort of the trick of stargazing using one thing to find another. You can use the Big Dipper, the two stars at the end of the bowl, find the North Star in tonight's sky, the one star that doesn't move in our night sky. It's directly above the North Pole of the Earth. It's always in that same spot all year long, all, any time of night. And it's connected to the Little Dipper there. You can draw a line down through the bottom of the bowl of the Big Dipper. Once you find the Big Dipper, you can find the backwards question mark of Leo the Lion, one of the first springtime constellations, which means warmer weather is on the way. Tonight, Leo the Lion, is staring at my favorite planet other than the Earth, the red planet Mars, fourth planet from the sun. Uh, there's a couple of uh, views of Mars there. One on the top is how you might see it through a, a nice telescope here on Earth. The bottom is a, a better Hubble Space Telescope view. If you look toward the south this evening, you'll see another recognizable shape, one you should memorize because it's really handy to know. Look for the three stars in a line that mark Orion's belt. If you can find Orion, look for kind of a stick figure person up there in the sky once you find the belt. Uh, you found probably the most famous wintertime constellation. You can use it to find the big dog, Canis Major, down in the, down in the southern sky tonight. Uh, the Sirius, the dog star, the brightest star we see in the nighttime sky. Just draw a line down through Orion's belt. If you draw a line up through Orion's belt, in the other direction, you can uh, find the V-shaped head of Taurus the bull, uh, uh, another great wintertime constellation. And if you look in Taurus's shoulder, the next slide will have this too, but if you look in Taurus's shoulder, you'll see a, a very pretty little cluster of stars. It's a really interesting thing to see with your own eyes or through a telescope. The Pleiades, or Seven Sisters, 
Uh, they used to be kind of an eye test. People would look at the seven sisters and see if they could see all seven stars. Most people can't. Uh, but actually today with telescopes, we know that there are about a thousand stars in that star cluster. It's a neat thing to look at, as is this thing right below Orion's belt in tonight's sky. With your own eyes, it might look like a, a little hazy patch in the night sky tonight. Telescope, we can see that it's a huge nebula, this huge cloud of dust and gas that is the birthplace of stars. Once we get into the realm of telescopes, as you get more and more into astronomy, you can see a lot, I think, cooler things up there. You can see the nebulas and the galaxies and the star clusters, uh, all sorts of things to see. Telescopes, when it comes time to buy a telescope, I don't have time to give you a whole buying guide tonight, but you can find uh, easily a dozen great buying guides online to how to pick a telescope, but I'd recommend do your homework. Do a little bit of reading ahead of time so you're, you're not sorry with what you've purchased. Do think about binoculars, too. Uh, they, can be, they can be a fun way to get into astronomy. Two types of telescopes you shouldn't buy. On the left, you have your uh, cheap uh, department store $50 to $100 telescope that's going to give you nothing but headaches. Stay away from that. Uh, spend a little bit more if you're serious about it. On the right, the telescope that ends up in your basement. You don't want to get a telescope that you don't know how to use. You, you couldn't find anyone that will show you how to use it or it didn't fit your needs. When you're looking at uh, getting into astronomy and looking through telescopes, also don't forget to look around your community. Uh, right here in Lansing and anywhere, uh, you can find astronomy clubs, planetarium, observatories that can help you out. And astronomers are notorious, notoriously friendly people who want to share every little thing about their hobby with you uh, and will help you get started. Um, here are a few resources for you, uh, some contact information if you ever want to talk to me. But the most important thing uh, I would pay attention to is the third one down, uh, Stellarium. Uh, it's a, a computer program that I used to make several of my slides tonight, um, but it's a really nice, uh, completely free, uh, open source, multi-platform uh, a piece of astronomy software that anybody can use to start learning about the nighttime sky. Uh, it's not as good as the Abrams Sky Calendar, but it's a pretty nice piece of software. So check it out if you're interested in the sky. Thanks a lot, everybody.